Hello, my friends, we are back. Well, there's our first clue as to where we're going today. Well, here we are, the Henry Ford Museum in Greenfield Village. So we have made it, my friends, and what we are doing today is we are gonna explore the Henry Ford Museum. Now this museum is, I gotta be honest, one of the most interesting museums in all of the United States. They have some of the most talked about vehicles in history here. And today's vlog, you notice I'm wearing a different pair of sunglasses because today's a Patreon vlog for Sean and Chris Smith. So I hope you enjoy it. And let's go take the tour. And there's the man this is named after, Mr. Henry Ford. And no, that is not Doc Brown's clock tower. That's the entrance to the museum. So let's go. Just to walk in, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Well, first things first, we've got right here, Thomas A. Edison has written his name as well as put his footprints above that shovel where they've done, looks like a induction ceremony of some sort. 1928, September 27th. I personally am not an Edison fan, and my brother is not either because we, well, we fall on the Tesla side of things. And if you know anything about the history, many believe Tesla was, well, he was screwed over and possibly even done in by Thomas Edison. And right here is footage of Thomas Edison actually doing that groundbreaking ceremony, writing his name in the ground right there. You see it? You can see him signing it right there. Now, right now, we're approaching the presidential vehicles, and probably the most famous presidential vehicle of all time is here. This first one is the Reagan car. Now, you might have seen this when the assassination attempt happened, and uh, they had to shovel him in there to get him out of here. I believe that was this car. I think it would have been on the other side. Wow. Now they originally made this for President Nixon, but yeah, this was the one. This was the one that that uh, Ronald Reagan would have been ushered into. It's a big dent in the door from where. Yeah, and you can see there's a little mark in the door, like a dent, from where they were hustling everybody in. Gosh, check that out! Right there, you can see it. Now the limo in front of us, it says President Kennedy's 1963 assassination in this limousine represents a pivotal moment in our nation's history when we as Americans were simultaneously consumed by shock, a scene of loss and fear for a future. Now obviously we all know if you've ever seen the, the footage that, well you can see it right here, it was a convertible. So they've put the top back on, but as we get to this back passenger seat, that's where John F. Kennedy was sitting. He would have been assassinated right in this seat. Jackie would have been in that seat and she would have crawled out the back during that motorcade. I can't believe we're seeing that. And then here he is, riding in the car. And here he is, riding in that seat that fateful day. So if President Kennedy would have been sitting right here, he would have had a view of right there. And then I have to get a back view because, you know, obviously we've seen where the shot came from behind and right here on the back is where Jackie would have, well, originally we thought she was trying to get out, but we find out later that she was actually retrieving a piece of his head, his, his skull. She was retrieving it from the back. And President Kennedy would have been sitting right there. There it is. Well, I don't mean to horn in on Jacob's activities here, but uh, 
Sorry, carpetbagger. I'm going to buy my first Moldorama here. I figured all places, maybe I'll get one here. They have a Henry Ford one I'll buy. Maybe send it out to a Patreon or something. They're making mine right now. Make it a good one, Moldorama. Make me proud. Make me proud. Then it shoots out this little slot here. There it is. Bloop. It's going to be hot. I think my mom would want one of these. I just noticed they have a Kennedy car Moldorama, so my mom has always been fascinated by the Kennedy assassination, so I think I'll get her one of these. There you go, Mom. They're making your Kennedy car right now. Well, there it is, Mom. Hot off the presses, literally. Burning my hands. So, Sean and Chris, you're both gonna also gonna get one of these Kennedy cars. Now, just to lighten the mood a little bit, let's go over here and take a look at this amazing McDonald's display. The White Castle signs. Columbus uh, Company. And that's a 1956 Chevy Bel Air. What a beauty. Now here's a 1951 Studebaker and they said, if you wanted to turn heads back in 1951, you bought a Studebaker. Too bad my grandpa's not here to verify that. Here's an old Abbott Downing stagecoach. Kind of looks like the old uh, Wells Fargo logo, doesn't it? That's pretty cool original too I mean you can tell just look at the painting and everything on there incredible so this is actually an early form of public transportation this was a streetcar a, a horse buggy drawn streetcar 1875 Wow they would have uh, yeah I mean actually you can see that's got the rail and everything it's pretty interesting so this picture says that this was Detroit's Woodward Avenue electric streetcar line. And uh, they eventually replaced the horse-drawn carriage streetcars with electric ones. Now this is kind of cool. This is an old Howard Johnson sign, an old Howard Johnson's eatery. Now here we have Dwight D. Eisenhower's Bubble Top 1950 Lincoln. It's a presidential car. Wow, now that's traveling in style, baby. Look at that. And this one is FDR's, called the Sunshine Special, 1939 Lincoln. Seems to be a running theme that they always use Lincolns or Continentals or pretty much any Lincoln car. Wow, FDR, the new deal. Well, I'm a huge Teddy Roosevelt fan, so it's pretty cool to get to see this. Used from 1902 to 1928, Teddy Roosevelt's Broham. From 1902. What a what an interesting president he is. Here we're walking back in time. You see that old Holiday Inn sign. You've got a 57 DeSoto here and a 1955 Corvette Roadster. Look at that. What a beauty. Now this case is showing how important it was for uh, once they started getting cars like this that um, road trips became a big thing. You can see they've got the quote from Jack Kerouac and they've got the picture from I Love Lucy and the, the family truckster there from National Lampoons. Interesting pivotal time in American exploration for families. The nation's innkeeper. This is interesting, they actually have a recreation of like a Holiday Inn room right here that you can look into, an old Holiday Inn. Wow, look at all these. The commuter car. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, these, are, these were all like, this was the early stages of electric 
automobiles. And there's the electric charging station right there. Electric cars are pretty popular and you can see right there it says 1913 Hybrid Rambler. So what happened? Uh, how did it make, how did it become that, <laughs> as of a few years ago we thought that was an innovative technology. You do not see these out on the road anymore. Now my brother was telling me that this is actually one of the cars that has a uh, gas turbine engine. He said at that time you could have used like coal dust or gas or whatever. They were experimenting with different things, including after World War II nuclear power for cars, if you can believe that. Here's some old Texaco pumps and cars, and they didn't stop there because they actually recreated an entire Texaco gas station right side or right inside of here, a whole uh, mechanics shop. So this is a 1986 Ford Taurus, and they they had a slogan that said, "Give the people what they want." And we just noticed that they said this was so futuristic for its time that they modified it a little bit, and then they used it in RoboCop as RoboCop's car. <laughs> Doesn't look all that futuristic, does it? <laughs> Now let's check out some race cars. Here's an original GT40. And here we have a 1919 Model T Ford. And this actually was obviously in a race. Look how filthy it is. You've got damage right up there, the front of the hood. Look at the This is really cool. You have a Thunderbird, then you have a toll booth right there, like a toll stop. And then kind of the old, uh, the old RV camping attachment. You see it says Camp Wahoo. And then they have an Airstream, which, you know, many of us have probably seen. They're very popular these days. But then you got the camping in style. These were, these were great beach cars because everybody could, you know, just pop up right on the beach and have their surfboards across the top. Basically a Winnebago in a van. And then this is an example of early roadside lodging. For those road trips, this is what you could expect to stay in. Now if you take a look at this, you can see an old railroad string of carriages, coach cars. And then here's our conductor seat right here. Wow, that's pretty cool. I've never seen anything like this before. I mean, this is, wow, what history. So right here on the other side of the locomotives, they have a really cool uh, train set. And I recently was notified by a friend of mine that um, Neil Young, the musician, is the majority stockholder of Lionel Trains. And at some point, I will do a vlog telling you how that came about and why that is. And here you can see they actually have a camera on the model train as it goes around. Now this is definitely worth looking at. 1792 to 1802, chariot made by William Ross. I've never seen one that old. That's incredible. This place is incredible. If you're coming through Michigan, I highly recommend coming here. This is just amazing. Yeah, let's go uh, take a peek inside this. Now this train says it's, it's an ice plow. Wow. Again, never seen anything like this before. Now if you're thinking about tuning out right now because you're saying, Jordan, you're showing too many cars, you don't want to tune out. There's some insanely historical stuff still to come. Now this is the section my brother is extremely excited to see because these are all old race cars. From every generation, this is a 1902 
Ford 999. And this is a 1906 Locomobile Old 16 Road Racer. This kind of reminds me of the, uh, the Munsters car from the movie. Look at all of these. So cool. And check out these drag racers. This guy's blowing my mind. The goldenrod? Look how long that thing is. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you would have sat in there because that's your little view screen right you see, you see Bob's name on there and then you'd be looking all the way down this now I I don't know exactly if those are for that but it almost looks like those would have been a sight like a, like on a gun like you could look no. down and all oh, their intakes well shows what I know Wow, these are great. Land speed racing. Wow. This one is touted as having the world's fastest fuel tank. And this is Mustang number one. That's a beauty. It's like blue metallic interior. And that's Bill Elliott's race car. I've never heard the Buick Riviera described this way, but it says Ferrari plus Rolls Royce equals Riviera. There's a 1936 Lincoln Zephyr. And a 1948 Tucker. Look at this old time school bus. It's almost, it almost looks like a Hummer. Built in 1927. Wow! Now in the vlog the other day I mentioned that Pete Rose had started out playing at Crosley Field and Powell Crosley um, was the owner of Crosley Industries and they basically made everything. They made turntables, radios, refrigerators, bicycles, and even a 1951 Crosley Hot Shot Roadster. Check that out. You can even see it says, it says Hot Shot right there. And they still make things to this day. I have a uh, Crosley turntable myself. And this is a 1913 Scripps Booth Rocket. Look at that, a cycle car. So obviously you can see the little hand gear thing in there. So you would have uh, had to pedal to get this sucker going. And it even has a bike, like a bicycle chain type deal. Kind of an odd pairing here, you have a uh, 1983 Honda Accord right next to a 1950 Nash Rambler and then a 1981 Ford Escort look at that Duesenberg that's what Clark Gable used to drive he had one of those I don't know they were trying to sell it a few years ago and it went up for auction and didn't get sold so I don't know what happened to it but man what a beauty look how long those are that is style. That is absolute style. And here's a 1937 Cord A12. A12. And that, it may not be the same car, but it certainly looks like the same type of car, um, if it were yellow, that Dan either Daniel LaRusso drove or it kind of reminds me of Biff's car from Back to the Future. And check out this Bugatti. Wow, 1931 Bugatti. With a P or like a darker green top to it. Even in 1931, this Bugatti would have costed $43,000 when the average wage was only $1,388 a year. Good luck. It says built in France by a German physician. Now here's a little bit more modern. These are mostly 80s cars that you might have seen in your life. That one, if it were white, that's the Ford Bronco. I mean, you could, we've seen those in the OJ chase. And then this is from my mom. She used to drive an Omni. 
So I was looking in this case and it shows a picture of Martin Luther King and his family in a car and it says that Disney had designed a magic skyway used Ford cars and a conveyor belt system to carry people through scenes with moving dinosaurs and cavemen. And this was Martin Luther King and his family using that skyway in an electronically controlled car during his trip to the fair with his family in 1964. This is kind of an interesting car because they say that this was the only car when it was released that you could get with a V8 engine for under $2,395. This was a 1932 Ford V8. And here are a couple of more Model T's. Even a Model N. And this one right here with these giant wheels, they called this the farmer's new best friend. And if you look at some of the pictures that they have, I'll show you. You can see a farmer out kind of using it to get over hills and things like that. Well, one of the oddities here at this museum that I knew about, and we looked and looked and looked on their um, literature they gave us, their map, and we couldn't find it. So we went and asked somebody. We said, hey, we know that you have this. Where is it? And she said, nobody can ever find it. So she just walked us over to it. This is an oddity. They say that when Thomas Edison died, his son kept a vial right by his bed and captured his last breath. And that last breath is in that glass tube right there. And the little paper next to it says, Thomas Edison was Henry Ford's hero, as well as his friend. During Edison's final illness, this test tube was close to his bedside upon his death. It was sealed with paraffin wax. Edison's son later sent this, his father's last breath to Henry Ford, knowing their close relationship. They were also really good friends. It was, they were actually a trifecta of friends. Um, you have to throw Mr. Firestone in there. All three of them used to travel very, very frequently together. They were all three best friends. So you had Firestone, Ford, and Edison. And there's his last breath. Wow. And then also, I'm a big fan of Tesla, like I mentioned, and they have a death mask of Nikola Tesla here. And what I was saying was that um, I've seen a lot of documentaries, and what they say is that Tesla kept a lot of notebooks. And when he passed away, he had a um, kind of a bad deal with Edison where um, basically everything that he invented, Edison would put his name on, and Tesla would get no credit. And when Tesla died, magically, all of the notebooks including what they say Tesla had figured out ways around energy crises that we've been dealing with for like what over what decades could have been solved with his work and there's his death mask and then you also have early versions of the incandescent bulb right here you can see right right over there and then Lewis Latimer's light bulb right there. Thomas Edison's first light bulb. I may have to get one of those. It's just kind of an interesting thing. I guess they did me a favor. I couldn't buy the Thomas Edison light bulb because it wouldn't accept credit cards in there for some reason on that one specific machine. Well, thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.